Thank you so much. Come on, Petersburg. It is so good to be with you today and in the sunshine. Listen, I'm here today. Thank you for your leadership, your commitment. Friends, on days like these, the possibility seem absolutely The opportunity to be radiant to reach their full potential as far as the blue skies and the beautiful sunsets we enjoy in Florida. For generations, our state has served as a true beacon for people seeking a fresh start in a land of paradise. That's my family story, too. My grandfather, Adam Christodoulos, came to this country in 1914 from the Greek island of Cyprus. Even though he came through all this island with just pennies, he eventually made his way to Pennsylvania. He couldn't speak the language and he only had a third grade education. He didn't speak English, he didn't know anyone, but he was full, full of determination and faith in the promise that is America. He shined shoes for a living for $5 a month. He worked hard, he saved his money, and he opened a small business, a dry cleaning business and a cafe. My grandfather cleaned clothes for years. He used to say, he cleaned clothes of all the doctors in the town so that his son, my father, Charlie Chris Sr., could go to college and become a doctor himself, raising four kids in America's middle class, including me. My parents moved to St. Petersburg when I was just three years old. Regardless of your place of birth, or your race, or your gender, or your wealth, for a century, people have been coming to Florida to pursue that same American dream, to raise a family, to work hard, to send their kids to good public schools, and to try to put away a little so they can retire with dignity. I grew up in this wonderful city. I went to St. Pete High. I graduated from Florida State University. My family story, go Knowles. My family story is the American story. It's a story of American opportunity. It's unique to our Florida. My grandfather struggled, the opportunities he provided my father and me, and the values my mom and dad taught me and my three sisters. That's why two of my sisters became public school teachers. That's why I've dedicated my life to public service. And that's why I'm a proud Florida Democrat. That's why I'm an eternal optimist, too. Because this is an only in Florida story that beats in my heart. But these days, it's so much harder for Floridians to pursue their dreams. It's harder to thrive or even survive in Florida's economy. Every year, the middle class gets squeezed by rent, by housing costs, utility bills, health care costs, student loan debt, and stagnant wages. People of color continue to be systemically locked out of opportunity and equal treatment. And during this pandemic, black and Hispanic residents are more likely to get COVID, more likely to die from it, more likely to be unemployed, and less likely to receive a vaccine. A century ago, our country welcomed my grandfather, gave him the opportunity to work hard and to rise up. Today, working people are still full of hope, still working hard, but too many are struggling to put food on the table and keep a roof over their head. This isn't by accident, my friends. The debt is stacked against the middle class, aided and abetted by Governor Ron DeSantis and his Republican allies in Tallahassee. This is a governor who doesn't listen, who doesn't care, and doesn't think about you. Unless, of course, you can write him a campaign check. Really, he sees our state's wonderful diversity as a threat, not as a strength we all celebrate. He's failed to lead during the greatest health and economic crisis of our lifetime. Local officials were forced to fend for themselves without direction from our state. Scientists and doctors offered advice, but he listened to quacks and conspiracy theories. He's waged a constant assault on democracy from voting rights to civil rights. He's promised tax cuts to the wealthy and the corporations and the well-connected. Yet our unemployment benefits are still some of the lowest in America. Governor DeSantis' vision of Florida is clear. If you want to vote, he won't help you. If you're working, he won't support you. If you're a woman, he will not empower you. 
If you're an immigrant, he won't accept you. And if you're facing dis discrimination, he won't respect you. If you're sick, he won't care for you. If you're impacted by climate change, and we all are, he won't even believe you. That's not a vision for our state. That's why in Florida, where opportunity should exist, should exist for everyone wanting to work hard, millions of people are just barely getting by. Changing this is not going to be easy. Powerful special interests depend on Governor DeSantis for their massive profits, and they'll spend tens of millions of dollars to stop us. Because if everyone rises up, they can't stay on top. No, friends, this won't be an easy fight, but nothing in life worth fighting for is easy. I'm announcing today that I'm running for governor of Florida for a Florida for all. Yeah, it's a little hot here. But we're in the Sunshine City in the Sunshine State, and we're just... We need to stop the division and the hate. We need to bring our state together and finally open up opportunity for every Floridian because you deserve jobs you can live on, housing that you can afford, and justice that is truly equal. And that's what I'll fight for every single day. I'm running. Thank you. I'm running so you will be in charge again, so you will have a governor who will work for the people with a steady hand and an open heart. That is a moment built on consensus rather than fueling division to restore civility instead of demonizing those who have a different point of view. Together, we will build a Florida for all. First, I will protect civil rights and human rights. We won't make it harder to vote. We'll make it easier to vote, just as I did when I was governor. You deserve that. We won't ignore the people's will on constitutional amendments and will protect all of the rights of all Floridians all the time. Peaceful protesters, women and their right to choose, and the LGBTQ community. And we will expand Medicaid, making affordable health care a human right. Second, I'll treat climate change like the existential threat that it is. We'll name a chief climate change officer to tackle the crisis head on. We'll develop a statewide climate change plan like the one developed by our Tampa Bay leaders. And we'll develop a statewide energy plan setting ambitious goals for renewable energy like solar and wind. My God, we are the Sunshine State. And we'll invest in safeguarding our communities from rising sea levels and stronger hurricanes. Third, I will invest in the future of Florida. We'll invest in our public schools and relieve students and teachers from high stakes testing. We'll invest in colleges and universities and prepare our kids for the 21st century economy. We'll never cut bright future scholarships. And we'll invest in infrastructure and public transit, not toll roads to nowhere. We'll support small businesses, not tax cuts for corporations. We'll support working families by creating decent jobs, jobs with dignity, and keeping taxes low, and keeping college affordable, and making health care available, and a cost of property insurance reasonable. Listen, I know this is an ambitious agenda, but we can get it done. We'll follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. I wear these on my wrist every day, and it says practice the golden rule every day. If we all simply did that, a lot of these problems would go away. We'll treat those that disagree with us today as our allies of tomorrow, not our enemies. There's too little decency and civility in Florida's politics, frankly, in America's politics. And changing that starts with changing the attitude at the top. Unlike this governor and the Republican leadership in Tallahassee, we will listen to our fellow Floridians. Whether it's fully legalizing marijuana, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, strengthening background checks, banning assault weapons, all of these things need to be done to have true justice in our state and our country. Black and brown Floridians are treated fairly under this new administration when we win. 
That's what this is about, fundamental fairness for all. A Florida for all Floridians. And listening to the people, it shouldn't be a radical notion. It's really pretty simple. Just do the right thing. It's governing with a heart, Scott. It's doing the right thing for all our people and working together to build a Florida for all Floridians. Listen, that's what we've been doing in Congress, working with President Joe Biden's leadership and signing the American Rescue Plan. Here's what it did. It's meant checks for 20 million of our fellow Floridians, 7 billion in Florida schools to open for our kids and make them safe. Five billion for Florida's counties and cities to keep us all safe, and three point five billion dollars to ensure states like Florida have no more excuses when it comes to expanding Medicaid and providing health care to hundreds of thousands of working Floridians. This is odd. Governor DeSantis opposes that bill. Believe it or not, he said, quote, it stinks to high heaven. That's unconscionable. Well, we shouldn't be surprised. Every step of the way, this governor has been more focused on his personal political fortune than the struggles of regular Floridians. And that's just not right. Just like our former president. He always claims credit, but never takes responsibility. It begs the question, my friends, how many lives would have been saved if Governor DeSantis had listened to the scientists and medical experts? If he had simply promoted a mask-wearing and social distancing policy instead of a political agenda. How many lives would have been saved if Governor DeSantis had implemented a statewide plan to protect Floridians? How many small businesses would have been saved if Governor DeSantis recognized the key to rebuilding our economy isn't politics, it's beating the virus and ensuring people's safety. The truth is, Governor DeSantis has failed us. Just look at the terrible damage Governor DeSantis and his allies have brought about and caused during this legislative session. A $1 billion tax increase on ordinary Floridians to pay for tax breaks for corporations. New limits on your and my voting rights as regular Floridians. It's unbelievable. Outright discrimination against transgender kids, mean and cruel to children. This agenda is shameful. And it doesn't represent Floridians. And nothing is as shameful as the way DeSantis steered vaccine shots to the wealthy white neighborhoods of his most generous support. It's heartbreaking. Governor DeSantis and the leaders of the Republican Party have simply lost touch with what regular Floridians need and truly care about. It started around the time I left the party over a decade ago, and it's only gotten worse. They demonize, distract, and divide Floridians. They even lie to their own supporters because they know the truth, that their agenda does next to nothing to help Floridians in the middle class and everyone working hard to get there. Their violent mob that attacked the nation's capital on January 6th shows the consequences of those lies. And Governor DeSantis is trying to become a national leader of that Republican Party. So it's time, frankly, it's past time, for your voice, the people's voice, to be heard again in Tallahassee. It's time to build a Florida for all Floridians. And if you stand with us, and volunteer with us, and organize with us, knock on doors with us, make calls with us, we're going to take back our beautiful Florida. Because the change Florida needs isn't about any one candidate. It has come to the, from all of us. It has to come from all of us. And if we seize this moment, if we take this chance, if we focus on the things that unite us, we can create the Florida we know is truly possible. Piece by piece and brick by brick, we can build a Florida for all Floridians. We can create a society that values every person. We can break the fever of division and hatred that has afflicted our politics. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's work. Let's organize. Harder than we ever have before. Let's fight to bring our state back together. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless our beautiful Florida. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.